Take the first sip of cocoa. Cheers. Cheers. It's not cocoa. <laughs> oh. Yeah, that's the Swedish coffee. Pretty sure they don't grow coffee in Sweden. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know. <laughs> okay. So, how you been doing? I've been doing good. We've been having a little break from yeah. the podcast now. Yeah. So we have a lot to talk about. Yeah. A lot of things has happened since our last episode, which you haven't maybe seen because we haven't uploaded. <laughs> no. <it. laughs> but who knows? Maybe in the future we will like split it up in in a few episodes. But yeah. that we will get back on the podcast scene and make another video. Just yep. Just yep. us two. <clears throat> Drinking some coffee. Oh, hell yeah. Talking about what has happened and what has happened since mm. last time. Yeah. And uh, like you said, this it has been uh, quite a long time mm. since we talked. And uh, But the biggest moment that has happened is my competition. Mm-hmm. For sure. We talked about it a little bit during last episode, but that was like during the prep of it. Yeah. Uh, and then I talked about just focusing on my like weak points and trying to set up the, especially the squat, because that has been my weak point for a long time. Yep. But now I would beg the differ because now after the competition, I feel like maybe the deadlift is the one to focus on the most. Mm-hmm. That's also why I focused like the least amount of time on it. Mm. Because the deadlift has always been my lift, so mm. I always felt like pretty secure of it. Mm. Didn't need that much extra time to set it up. Yeah, but that's also one thing I learned from powerlifting, especially prepping for it, is that you have to give every lift like equal amount of time because you practice a skill. Yeah, uh, like as much as the other. Yeah, and you've been like really focusing on the squat like the last at least year yeah i would say it's like <laughs> last uh, i started last autumn yeah like it's almost pretty much a year now yeah then i was like and i wanted to like change it up because my squat was almost as big or weak as my bench mm. not not quite, but I remember my bench was like 125, even 130, and my squat was like max 160. Yeah. And that's like a major issue. And I figured that my endurance, my endurance, especially in the squat, has always been like the big thing for me because everything above five reps is like death. Mm. <laughs> and unfortunately, that's the thing with majority of lifters. They yeah. only do the like singles and the low repetitions uh, because they're not used to like doing this like 10, 10 or more reps in the squat. So. I, I think you get like sorted into a camp when you start lifting. You're like, ah, nah, I'm only doing 15 or more on yeah. every exercise. Yeah. Or you're like, no. Oh. More than five is cardio. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is like that because it has been set up like that. More than five is cardio. And in a way, it could be considered as cardio because... No. <laughs> we, get, no. we get to the point, man. Because it's like practicing your endurance Yeah. in a different way. Mm. It's like, it's probably not a... Not a word for it, but like more muscular cardio, if you will. Well, I guess people talk about like work capacity and uh, muscular endurance mm-hmm. and stuff like that. Yeah. Instead of your own like just respiratory endurance mm-hmm. cardio type of thing. That one does play part in it too. If you yeah. get the reps like up to oh, yeah. 15, 20, on a, especially mm-hmm. on something like a squat. Mm-hmm. And need some oxygen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and that was like the thing I remember I could... It wasn't the weight in the squat that was the problem. I could like 
yeah, it was the weight, but to get up that weight, I had to get up that endurance. Mm. Because I could maybe do like five reps on three plates, 140 kg. Mm. But even when doing more than five reps on like 60 or 80 kg or like even <laughs> below 100 kg was very taxing for me. Mm-hmm. So I figured I have to like improve this to get up my original like one rep maxes. Yeah. And that I did because it took a long time, but you have to make like your weaknesses. You don't have to make them your strengths. No. But it's like the principle you have to put yourself in an uncomfortable position. Because if you can make uncomfortable like your vulnerable positions, mm-hmm. like your new standards, even your new strengths, you could like overcome the most, almost anything. Yeah. And that's like balancing it out a little bit because you can't be like afraid to fail or afraid to like do the things that you suck at. Otherwise, you have to like uh, practice them. Mm. Yeah. And that's the most core principle behind why I did it. I only like start doing even 15, 20 <laughs> rep squats. <laughs> Didn't matter in at least in the beginning, the weight. I just wanted to get up that that high rep, that like pump and endurance mm. work to get myself comfortable in that insanely brutal like mindset because doing 20 reps of the barbell back squat it's really insane yeah <laughs> even if you do it with lighter weight because it's really really taxing yeah yeah what's the most weight you've done 20 reps with on the squat no it's been a long time since i did it but i believe i got like eight very close to 20 with uh, 100 kg yeah that's good that's good yeah so I I think that was the most but now in the spring as well uh, me and my girlfriend did this like challenge of like 20 20 sets you, you, yeah. like, from, <laughs> you start with an empty barbell yeah at uh, set one and for every set you like surpass you mm-hmm. put on more weight yeah so it ends with like, it should end with like, uh, what is it? The original is one rep on 210. Mm. But when 210 <clears throat> is a little above my one rep max, we adjusted it so it suits our like one rep maxes. Yeah. So we did that and I remember failing with like maybe doing four or five reps on 130. But that was like, uh, set 14 or something <laughs> like that so i'm really pleased with that and mm. uh, i would be excited to like try that one again because last time we did that was maybe uh, almost six months ago or something yeah. like that quite a while quite a while and as you know i i actually took a new squat pr at the yep. meet yep which is both surprising but still i don't know it is surprising. Looked easy. <laughs> yeah, it was like... Um, didn't say it was easy, but it wasn't a grinder either. Mm-hmm. It was like... It's good form. Good form and uh, good speed. Looked powerful. I think you'd had more, at least 5 to 10 kgs in the yeah. bank there. Yeah, and it's like like I talked about on my my previous talks about this as well, that... I feel like I could have have those four plates. Yeah. At least 180 on the meat. Because in competition you also get a lot of adrenaline. Yeah. And you you get very easily affected by that like that sensation of lifting on stage, lifting in front of a lot of people and so on and that helped me a lot. But it also helps you like go for it. Yeah. Because like I said the issue in training for a lot of people is the fear of failing. Yeah. It's like they're afraid of like failing a squat because maybe dropping the bar in a big gym will draw attention or something like that. I don't know. I don't. I see it like this. This for me, I don't care about failing a lift. 
because of other people. No. I care about failing a lift because I might hurt myself. Yeah, that's <laughs> that's the exact uh, correct mindset as well. And you got pills for that, you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nah, but uh, this is something that I like not learned. I always knew it, but like addressed myself the thing with what other people think about you. Yeah. And that's something that really like helped me along the way, like just doing it for you, which is a really important message. But yeah, like I said, to the competition, it's like it helps you like go for it because you got nothing to lose. Yeah. Just to go for it. And when I realized when I was at the whole the bottom position in the squat with 170, mm. it was like it felt pretty easy. Mm. Like I said, it was a small grinder grinder there but i could have like 180 yeah but the goal for me this time was just to like try to get the nine white lights which i did yeah uh and like just focus on the form that's controversial <laughs> nine white that's light. very controversial <laughs> man yeah at first it was like i get got one faulty yeah faulty lift and that was the last bench press, uh, which I had a tiny butt lift. Mm. Uh, the butt elevated a little off the bench. Mm. But uh, the day later, I got a message from uh, one of my coach or the founders at my, my mm-hmm. um, club. And he said, congratulations for all <laughs> like nine good lifts, really good job. And I'm like... Uh, I didn't get nine white lights, <laughs> but then I. Well, also to be fair, the butt lift was. It was during a very short. It was yeah. like a split second, and it was very tiny. Mm. So I mean. So I, I'm like, I take it, <laughs> uh, and it really depends on the federation as well because uh, some federations are a lot more strict. Mm. With things like that and that was a more like open competition i think mm. but like you said it was a very minor moment of it mm. so it maybe wasn't quite enough for it to fail but uh, yeah i went to the website and checked it out every lift was like uh, white lights good lifts yeah so I'll take that. It's a very, very good start. Second place in his weight class. <laughs> <laughs> First competition. Hell yeah. Not because there was only two people <laughs> in the weight class. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, that, that was really exciting. Yeah. And it was actually fun just spectating as well. Mm-hmm. And I don't know why, but I was also really tired after the competition. Yeah, <laughs> just because it's really, there. whether you lift or not on meet, that's because you, it's a lot of waiting. Yeah. Because you do your lifts, you do your three squats, then you have to wait like one, even two hours until you can do the bench. Then you do the same thing until you can do the deadlift and so on. So it's a very long day, a mm. long procedure. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, really, really happy to try it out. And like I said, I kind of fell in love with it. But I will like adjust a few things now. Try to look for competitions for next year. Mm. Not in the rush of it now, uh, this year at least. And maybe, maybe try to find some competitions with only one lift, like only bench competitions. I might fuck around. Hell yeah, I figured, I figured. <laughs> yeah, so we see, but uh, generally I, I want to compete in SBDs, but uh, nothing wrong with like exploring. SBDs, BDSMs, all yeah. of them, yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> Every day, baby. Yeah, so can't wait. And now I'm like doing a little different training. Mm-hmm. Uh, switched it up and like I said I want to pursue competing Mm -hmm. but I don't want to train like off season as a powerlifter Uh, because it's for me at least it's really boring like one-sided type of approach because and I'm not saying it's not efficient because it's very efficient if you really stick to the program but that goes for every program. Mm. But especially powerlifting, when it is that kind of 
specific style of training. Mm. Uh, it's like, like I'm saying a lot, but it's like practicing a skill. You have to get better at a skill. It's not about how muscle you got. Yeah, you, you need muscle to like have that strength. But like you have to like teach a lot of your mind how to like lift it. And it's really taxing on your CNS as well. It's a lot about the neural drive, neural connections, mm-hmm. how efficient you are in that movement pattern. Yeah. Like the more you're going to lock it in, the better you're going to be in it. Mm. And that's also why I'm like, I personally need and want that variation in training because I'm, I'm that type of guy because I love, I love doing new things, mm-hmm. whether it's in the gym or like life generally, I like hate doing the, the same thing over mm-hmm. and over again. So I need that like variation and that's why like power building is great for me because I get like both sides. I can get a lot of strength training as well as the hypertrophy and the endurance part. Uh, so right now I'm doing a little more power building, yeah. but still very, it's still kind of hypertrophy and endurance dominant, but we yeah. still get those compound SBDs in like heavier sets on those mm, mm. just to get in something of the strength aspect yeah uh, and for me I like to like practice and address my weaknesses because you always will have weaknesses but your weaknesses will like develop mm. so the weaknesses I had maybe five years ago maybe could be one of my biggest strengths today yeah and like right now I feel like I have to focus on stability in a lot of areas but most like stability in my arms and chest you know mm. because I preserved a lot of muscle mass on my cut yeah but I still lost like 12 kg which is a lot of weight mm. Mm. I lost a lot of fat but uh, I but would I think- s- in a cut, you're not just going to lose muscle and fat. No. You lose other stuff. Too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course. You lose like soft tissue. Yeah. Like, and those are very important mm. in like, if you're going to carry big loads. Yeah. yeah, <laughs> yeah. The soft tissue <laughs> yeah. is important. So you lose more than just muscle or fat if you cut. Yeah, of course. And like I said, I lost both, but uh, I preserved a lot of. Oh, yeah. You look fucking sick. A lot of muscle because like all of my lifts is pretty much the same. Mm. Okay, the deadlift is a little weaker Mm. than it was at my heaviest, but that's a lot because I didn't practice it as much. We Uh, we can see like the deadlift is about, it was about 10% under. Yeah, it's not a lot. No, it's not a lot, but you didn't do like you could have had a little bit more at the meet in yeah. the deadlift yeah but we were it was the last lift it was the last lift of the last lifts yeah and uh we started early in the morning we had to drive far it was a lot of waiting yeah it was a long day so i i can understand that the mindset might not be there for the last lift of the no. last lifts <laughs> now I'm, I'm like again i on that day i just wanted to get the nine white yeah yeah get the good lifts just fill the setup both Mm -hmm. in the weight but the setup as the meat as a like experience yeah and i'm really pleased because i pulled off on what what was it 220 yeah 220 220. deadlift and like i said in in earlier talks i haven't touched above two two or five Mm. at all in training in like over mm. half a year so again really pleased with that one mm. and yeah I, I could have and that 220 deadlift is nothing to scoff at no that's a big big number a lot of, most people will never touch such a number no. so yeah I'm really pleased with that and it moved well mm. especially with the thought of me not <laughs> practiced it in, in training either but like strength wise I could 
could pull right now I could even pull 240 which is my old PR mm. but in the deadlift it's not about my strength it's more about my uh, grip strength uh, and things like that mm. and the same with the stability which I I'm gonna talk about a little uh, right now which mm. I I need to address in training it's mm. the little things like for my bench uh, it's the stability in the arms yeah. which I was trying to address right now I lost a lot of fat some lean tissue some muscle but mostly in the forearms mm. I think at least because I think they look pretty beefy man yeah man <laughs> my arms will always be the king <laughs> <laughs> yeah but uh, I can feel it because I easily start to sh- shake yeah. during the bench even if it's just 100 kg which isn't a, mm. a difficult lift for me and it's like when I do the reps it's not difficult Yeah. but even when I'm just unracking holding the bar mm. I'm like easily and I think that comes a lot from decrease in the like forearms uh, during the cut mm. uh, I'm like Wait, what, what frequency did you have in the bench like uh, prepping during, for mid during the prep uh, let's see now uh, well I almost benched every session we, we trained uh, okay well then it shouldn't be why because I know this if I don't bench for like two weeks, then I start getting the shakes even at mm-hmm. lower weights. Yeah, but, but your strength is still there. You have to keep in mind we had a little, we had quite big break after the meet. Like yeah. we, we maybe mm-hmm. didn't touch the <laughs> the gym in maybe almost two weeks after. Oh, okay, okay. Maybe a little over one week, but it still was a long time because we just need to settle down yeah, and just think, take it easy. I think that's good. And I think it's a lot from it comes from that as well. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so I'm just, but overall, I, I'm a quite, not shaky person, but I shake easily. But <laughs> it's, it's more than before. Yeah. And I feel like otherwise I, I haven't like trained forearms or grip strength in yeah. that matter. <laughs> yeah, you got beefy for us, man. <laughs> the mammoths. <laughs> yeah, I, I think that could help a lot because that's something that a lot of folks ignores. Yeah. It's like they don't see it's, it's not worth it to train forearms and they don't see like the bigger picture of it. Like I can get that, but uh, especially for me right now, I can see a lot of value of like improving it. There's so many modalities of training forearms too. You have like pinching strength, you have like crushing strength, you yeah. have like the static isometric mm. strength, and you have like flexing, extensing, yeah. extending, and it's like a very complex body part. Even mm. though it's small, there's yeah. a lot of shit going on in here. Mm. You have pronation, supination. You have it, and it all works in unison. Yeah. And it's like I started putting in a lot of, like I said, forearm training mm. with different variations uh, and like supplements. I have them here. I could oh, okay. show, show you. I got what you got. What you got, man? I got some fat grip. It's man. gonna take out the trend, guys. What? What? <laughs> <laughs> Oh shit! So yeah, I purchased yeah. some uh, fat grips and yes. thought I could could show them on the podcast as well because hell yeah, these are really good to use. We should next time we go training, I want to use these. Yeah, and it's like we used them before we had a, a buddy, a close buddy of ours, uh, a Swede, yeah. that we saw it, like gymmed with. Uh, sometimes but i remember he had uh, one of those mm-hmm. fat grips yep. and we tried it on the lat pull down mm-hmm. uh, but we were training in a more bodybuilding manner at that oh, time yeah, we were. <laughs> so uh, i haven't really explored it in that way yeah uh, so i thought what the hell especially now when i like w- want to address this forearm weakness 
could be a really good addition. I think you should fucking just embrace it and do it on everything. Yeah, and that's kind of... Slap it on everything. uh, Not gonna lie, it's kind of what I've done because, especially with the bench, Mm -hmm. I never (coughs) use these on the Mm -hmm. compounds. I think I will use them quite a bit for the deadlift, but not only with these. But right now I use them on the bench and I, I was like... I'm only using these on the bench for now. Yeah. Because that's another thing. These are especially good for me in the bench because I also, due to like maybe weak wrists as well, mm-hmm. uh, especially when I get to heavier weight, like mm. 120, 130 or above, yep. they easily tend to like break, not break like yeah. uh, bend. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, and that's an issue I want to address, like making them more straightforward, neutral, more in a stronger position. Yeah. That's really important to have. Uh, so I noticed when I'm using these, I really have to like actively think about and focus uh, to keep the wrists in this optimal position. Yeah. Because if I don't, I fucking die. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like it wasn't hard to focus on it but i really have to focus on it yeah and it's a good like supplement for me because then i really get used to how it should feel yeah and uh i also noticed i'm like almost almost as strong if not stronger when i'm using this which is i don't know if it if it's weird or that's normal but I feel really, I feel stronger when I'm using this. I think you should also slap them on when you do like the hypertrophy lifts, like you're doing your lat pull downs, you're doing your yeah. tricep extensions, yeah. dumbbell curls. Yeah. Just put them on, man. Yeah. Yeah, we tried them on the squat as well. I'm just. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> now we did them. Um, uh, the bench is the main one we addressed it on. But we tried, we do a lot of uh, like Romanian deadlift mm-hmm. and different variations. Mm-hmm. We like to do a lot of Romanian deficits. Uh, then we slap these bad boys on and that was brutal, man. But I'm really pleased with that because it's a really, really mm-hmm. good purchase. I can highly mm-hmm. recommend it. They're only like, I think, 30 bucks, 30 euros. Yeah. So it's a really high, high value purchase i think yeah i think you could do you do any dead hangs uh not right now but i actually talked about this yesterday when we was at the gym Mm -hmm. because like i said right now it's my grip in the deadlift yep i can feel like i it's not the weight it moves pretty good at the moment actually but it's like even as early as 200 kg which weight wise isn't a problem for me but it becomes a problem because of my uh, slipping grip yeah. and i remember when i did the 240 mm-hmm. in the mock meet yep. uh, which we had yep. like on christmas like over a year ago then i i did dead hangs like five minutes every day before the workout itself and that that really five minutes not five, five minutes, minutes in a, not five minutes in a row like uh, in total five minutes and that really that helped me a lot because uh, i wouldn't have had like 240 with the grip i don't have it today i mm. maybe could move 240 yeah but i don't have the grip for it so i just yeah. have to address that one as well i do dead hangs for stretching and mobility mm-hmm. yeah, that's i really just good feel it loosens me up all the lat <coughs> part and this chest and mm-hmm. everything and i just yeah. relax into it front mm-hmm. back and it feels so good yeah and i try to do it every day mm-hmm. and i and of course when i i usually do it only in the summer because i hang outside yeah, <laughs> yeah of course man and, uh, uh that's why i see when i start back next summer i can usually only hang for like maybe 70 seconds or something mm. like that but now that's i can easily thing. hang for like two minutes yeah mm. that's good and also after you've hanged like the fingers are like oh! 
<laughs> yeah, but well, it, it I do think be that's like fine. I don't think it hurts the tendons or ligaments any, but no, but it <laughs> it's it, painful a little bit. Yeah, it is. I remember it. when I did it as well. I I could do like maybe a little over a minute, which was good for me because but, at the moment. Oh yeah, you were heavy. I weighed <laughs> like one one eleven. So for me, it was. <laughs> I thought it was really good because, like, the first time I did it before I achieved that, like, over a minute, I could do like twenty second stops or something. Mm-hmm. Like that. So it was a really good exercise, and it could be ex- really good exercise for me now as well because I've been putting a lot of mobility focus on my thoracic spine, my shoulders. Mm-hmm. Because that's something that has been an issue for a long time. Yeah. But I've been just like ignoring it. <laughs> uh, I've been... No, I'm, ignoring is the wrong word. Just not putting enough emphasis on it. I've been addressing the mobility, mm-hmm. especially in the shoulders, during the years. But it's, it's been like, yeah, I've been practicing mobility like one or two weeks and then dropping off. Yeah. And that's the issue with mobility because it's like not as like valuable or enjoyable as no, it's, resistance training. It's you sort eat. of like doing the healthy cardio, zone two cardio. It's really fucking boring, but it has like incredible benefits. Yeah, and right now it's like I made it a routine, so I really feel like I I'm sticking to it right mm. now. Like. When I work at the hospital, uh, like if I mm-hmm. write some like journal texts yep. or some more administration work, I often take small breaks where I like do some, uh, what is it called? Sot press. Okay. Like I sit in a deep uh, squat position mm-hmm. and just not even holding anything, but just like not, not even going up to here because mm-hmm. I am not quite there yet, but just like addressing this type of movement mm-hmm. in that position. And I also do like wall so. wall angels and wall presses. Mm-hmm. Like I stand against the wall, like with yeah. the head, the butt and the like heels against the wall and just like pressing up like this, like 15, 20 reps. And like in the beginning, it was really brutal. It still is because mm. due to my like internally rounded shoulders, <laughs> when I'm getting to this position, it's really like I can really feel it, mm. especially in the like scapular area and like the deeper upper back muscles yeah. that they're really working. But I feel like it's it's in a good place right now. Yeah, it's. It's gotten better because already after doing it a couple of days now, it's like the mobility itself isn't there yet, but it will take time. But my posture has gotten a, hmm. a much, a, a lot better actually. Oh yeah, I actually I notice how much better my posture feels. I don't know if I notice how it looks. But it feels when I do the hangs every day. Yeah, that, that's good too. And when I stop doing the hangs, I can feel how tired my muscles get from being pulled forward like yeah. this. Yeah. They're like, they were like, what are you doing? Some If I don't hang for a couple of days, I'm like, why am I sore back here? Mm. And But it's because I don't you know i gotta keep it loose yeah. <laughs> but i think uh, like stuff like that hangs could be good for me for that yeah. reason as well for my like mobility in the shoulders and thoracic spine for that matter just like hanging and putting myself in this position yeah. with like it's like a weight mm-hmm. because i'm hanging with my body weight mm. so i think a combination of like dead hangs and the mobility drills which i mentioned mm. could be a good thing <coughs> yeah. and uh, i think it's it's not only for i'm doing it for the deadlift because that's i'm holding a lot of limited weight potential mm-hmm. in my deadlift even if deadlift is one of my strongest lifts but i noticed which i've been noticing for quite some while but when i get to that heavy weight it's not that it's bent like this mm-hmm. but i feel like 
it's packing up a lot of like it's limiting a lot mm-hmm. when I have this internal rotated and when I'm lifting heavy weights it easily gets to that yeah my my core and my lower back is still very packed and braced which is good mm-hmm. and I think it's okay to have that little flexion oh, yeah, that thoracic in the grounding, in the upper back that's totally fine but for me I feel like if I could like improve that type of the like posture and uh, mobility i could like unleash a lot of uh, extra weights in my uh, deadlift but it's also it it would make it feel better which would allow for more weight probably it's more like stacked (laughs) position as well if i can like unlock that uh, mobility issues yeah same goes for like didn't think of it at the moment but it would help my bench a lot as well mm. because uh, my bench arch mm. isn't that big no. it's gotten a lot mm. better now since i like been focusing a lot more powerlifting yeah it's gotten better <laughs> but it could be a lot lot better yeah and i've been like why does doesn't it like improve because uh, it was for quite some time i only did like thoracic spine mobility drills yeah. and like just focus to bring my arch up but it it was like wasn't there no but now i've been thinking it's i think it's a lot you due. got more coffee yeah man give me some coffee hell yeah i really feel you what watch me just sit here and wait hell yeah thank you sir you're welcome oh yeah that's the stuff Oh, save some for yourself. Warm your own stuff there. Get some. Yes. yes. Coffee break. Mm. Oh, hell yeah. yeah. I don't know if I've told you about this, but I actually, you know, I've been a chronic hardcore energy drink enjoyer. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, <I know. laughs> Go on. <laughs> so, last week, I've uh, this week I've started uh, drinking again. Mm. But before that week, I was four weeks clean, oh, no that's, energy drinks. That's very impressive, man. Yeah, and I just straight up went cold turkey. Mm. But I started drinking more of the bean water. Mm. That's so, <laughs> but that's that's good though I because. Think I think this is more healthy and it's better for your teeth. Yeah, I was just going to say that because it's like, but that's the most, if we talk about carbonated drinks in general, it's quite like energy drinks probably are like the worst Yeah, out of the carbonated mm-hmm. drink for your teeth. Yeah. Do you feel like you have experienced any like major differences or benefits since you like went cold turkey on the energy drinks? Or? I've had no physiological difference whatsoever because i've continued to have a similar caffeine consumption through yeah. the bean yeah but i have felt very good about myself being able to withstand the temptations yeah. of the energy drank mm. and i think that's very good it's like whether it's like energy drink or like putting off another doesn't have to be addiction yeah but you know Mm. it's a type of a drug if you will it is Uh, even if it's energy drinks beers tobacco sugar something like that because that's something i noticed a lot as well during the the almost year years that i've been putting off a lot of alcohol yeah (laughs) like uh, back in the day i was pulling like packs after packs like a madman (laughs) and uh fucking legend legend, (laughs) that's negative reinforcement no man i'll take it (laughs) no but uh because you know we we live with each other for a couple of years in sweden and we've been knowing I each think other for a we long also time. like very much reinforced each other's bad habits and got bad habits from yeah. each other. I got more drinking from you, and you got more like 
I think I maybe even made you drink more energy drink. Yeah, anything. that could be, but it's like energy drinks for me. It hasn't. It yeah, was, you were never like I need it. I think no, and it was. I wasn't. Yes and no with the alcohol. Yeah. Back in the day, I was like. It's not an addiction because mm. I'm a student. <laughs> 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 and it's like that because yeah, at the, there was a time when I could like like take a small scotch mm -hmm. even if it was in the week just for yeah. like pleasure after studying or something yeah. like that. So I really never saw it as a problem. And I don't <laughs> but yeah, it was a lot but it will include when you're like studying mm -hmm. very easily you having parties and stuff like that and it it's like part of the culture and lifestyle when you're studying mm. and it comes naturally every weekend and in like at least one of the weekdays yeah and like that's why i also don't regret anything i would mm -hmm. do it again because yeah same uh, it's it's a part of the student lifestyle as you said because you need to you need to have fun and enjoy yourself mm. and like there will come a time when you get older as today when you like actually like decrease the alcohol because mm. i'm not studying anymore I, yeah. I can't like party as i used to and that's fine but back in the day that wasn't at all like that no. crossed my mind no because it was such a big part of both, both our lives but that's pretty common uh, when you're studying and you're younger and just having fun yeah i i really enjoyed that time we had in sweden yeah and i look back at it like i'm glad i got all that partying out mm -hmm. of my system yeah i feel like i don't need to ever drink again <laughs> no, exactly yeah. it's like uh, it was a lot from uh, corona as well yeah. Because when the corona came, a lot of partying and like mm. uh, social, yeah. socially engaging like uh, activities and stuff like that was limited. Yeah, and it was at the time it was quite quite boring because you you had to stay at home more yeah. and get more isolated, which uh, could be seen as positive and negative. Yeah, uh, but it helped me and I think a lot of other young people as well to like really focus on other stuff yeah and it was due to that uh, uh, covid time i like got off the parting and like yeah. got used to other things yeah and that's i i really think that's a big factor as well mm. for me why i'm like uh, peaking right now because yeah. where i am today is like the healthiest strongest version of myself I've ever been. I think it definitely held back some of our gains drinking like mm -hmm. at least once or twice most weeks. Yeah. And it's like I never understood it then because uh, how could like alcohol or something like that <laughs> limit the gains because we didn't like see it in mm. that vision at the time. No. But I can I can see it now how it really helps. Yeah. I'm not saying like drop off all alcohol or no. everything. Like yeah. you said, you dropped off energy energy drinks, but just yeah. drinking coffee. Yeah, that's fine. It's a coffee. healthier yeah. option. Mm. I'm still drinking today, but it's instead of like one or two times every week and it's yeah. like one time each month or even yeah. longer than that, just and just appreciate appreciating it yeah more of that uh, we have to go out and drink and <laughs> it, now it's more like uh, appreciating the moment as i said and like just mm. enjoying your time with friends having a cold one or something yep. like that yep. don't don't you can still get drunk and be times like that but yeah. you don't have to do it like all the time don't have to get super smashed hammered mm -hmm. puking stupid drunk yeah. and we did most times mm. <laughs> but i think uh, that's that's pretty common yeah like student life as well mm. but yeah it's it's a big, big change i think i won one time during the studying years 
I had to take a break as well. I think I took like a three week break yeah. from dr- doing any drinking because I think it was a Monday or a Tuesday. Yeah. And I sat in class and I had the thought, it came to me. Yeah. Oh man, I wish I was drunk right now. <laughs> <laughs> and that, that immediately afterwards, I was like, wait a minute. Mm-hmm. That isn't really right. <laughs> that isn't a thought I should have. Embrace the moment. That might, <laughs> yeah, that, that might point towards it being a problem. <laughs> what? <laughs> Yeah, I'm not like saying moments like that cross my mind, but <laughs> you know, it was like suppressing other things yeah. because that's what basically drinking is. Mm. Uh, but then again, I would do it again in a heartbeat because it was a one of the best moments of my life mm-hmm. uh, comes from yep. those times. Yep. But it's like you said, it's it's good to have it like out of the way mm. i'm glad it happened but yeah. now i can like focus on yeah. other things uh, like training more as a private life, life and, uh, work work things like that yeah. and i feel i can actually focus on that i wouldn't if i've been like more <laughs> active in the drinking aspect. <laughs> but I, like i said i still enjoy a good cold beer yeah, or scotch so behind I. you i got my whiskey cabinet oh yeah i, I got <laughs> like uh, five five whiskeys mm. but it's like just could take them out like mm. once in a month and enjoying the soccer mm. game I, I watch a lot of like soccer american football a lot of sports so things like that i often like Pop a cold one or mm. just a scotch yeah, with, I, with the friends. And I stuff. drink beer every now yeah. and then too. Like yeah, I, uh, I like to find new wheat beers mm. and drink those. But that's like maybe once a month or something like that yeah, that exactly. I enjoy beer. And of course, I think I don't think it's once a month I go out like having more than one beer. I think it's maybe every other or every third month. Yeah. That it, I actually get more like quote unquote drunk or intoxicated. Mm. Yeah. So I, I think it's healthy mm. to yeah. have that good balance. Oh yeah. And I also feel like, but I, I think this comes for a lot of like, whether you're a man or a woman, that when you uh, get in a relationship, mm-hmm. you also decrease the time when yeah. you go out. Yeah. Because... Yeah. A lot of people like consume things like alcohol and things like that to go out and then maybe try to uh, find a girl yeah. or a man, whether yeah. the gender. That and is that's a big a thing. Large of it. part of it. Yeah. Yeah. And that's something as well. Yeah, it the time decreased after Corona, but now also when I uh, found a partner as well, mm-hmm. I also feel like it's more balanced mm-hmm. uh, that you only go out once in a while and that's yeah. totally fine yeah yeah and i have also found someone to be with a yeah. partner and but she hasn't really had the same no. drinking studying life and i can tell that she definitely still wants to go out drinking every yeah. now and then more often than me yeah so i i definitely think that those times that we went hard at the university really got the flushed out of the system yeah i do believe so yeah the golden days the golden <laughs> days yeah th- those were those were good times those were good times. speaking of university have you have you thought about like uh, specializing in some areas now after you like got your I degree have. i have and i even looked up doing the masters for occupational therapy oh. but i'm not allowed no. Because you have to have had your license and worked for two straight years. Yeah. Which we we didn't have no, our license. Not yet. <laughs> but uh, we're still young. And yeah, they're, they're still, still I think time. it's good to it's like, like work a little bit yeah. to like really get in the scene yeah. and get the experience you need. Mm-hmm. 
because I myself has like I said I like <laughs> variation again mm. so I don't want to like work with occupational therapy yeah. specifically all my life yeah no I, I don't, wa- don't think this is the end of be all I think there will be more or something else yeah and I think even another career path might I might be open to yeah, that too. It's, it's exactly and like I, I want to have occupational therapy as a foundation what I maybe pursue next. Um, as you know, I'm pretty like passionate and into psychology mm-hmm. overall. Mm-hmm. I, I also work at psychiatric care as an occupational yep. therapist at the moment, but I've been wondering and thinking about like pursuing the career and like specializing in psychotherapy mm. because I do and use a lot of music in both in my personal life and in my work life. Mm. I use a lot of music as a like creative tool for a lot of my clients mm. with maybe ADHD, autism, uh, learning disorders Mm. communicative disorders and so on Mm. and music therapy is a form of psychotherapy so Mm -hmm. that's something i maybe want to pursue in the future but like you said for Mm. yourself that uh, you have to work i have to work two years in psychiatric care Mm -hmm. before i can do that yeah and i've also looked up some courses and classes if you can like pursue and learn uh, different therapy forms yeah one of my big interests right now is like i don't know in english but uh, kbt yeah it's a cbt (laughs) yeah cognitive cognitive behavioral behavioral therapy therapy. yeah because i'm really cbt could also stand for cock and ball torture hell yeah (laughs) (laughs) continue but not that one (laughs) because i'm really i'm really like fascinated by behavioral therapy Mm. like how our behaviors in general work from Mm. person to person because also that's one thing i've learned when getting a partner as well because they could be so different in the behaviors yeah depending on like how they grew up where they grew up and from the start of their life up until now Mm. how different it could be just depending of small things like that and i'm like i always been into like psychological things Mm. and behavioral things like that for a long time Mm. as you know i also worked at like the uh, psychiatric care for like prisoners yeah in sweden uh, at the side of my own studies and i really got like invested in it at that time like it's really interesting yeah how like both how wrong it could get for those people especially but like how the brain works in general Mm -hmm. like Mm -hmm. i really want to like get in depth with how we work and that's also why i'm getting a little triggered sometimes Mm -hmm. when people that don't like believe in therapy yeah one that they don't believe in therapy Mm -hmm. but two like that they say that it doesn't do like anything or do they anything they disregard and, it completely and that it doesn't like help to talk mm-hmm. about what's on your mind your feelings and like yeah i understand that not your area mm-hmm. that you like don't have that insight but for me when i understand that it's like yeah you're you're so off because mm-hmm. it's like everything we do everything we think everything we act or react anything is like up here and Mm. it's so impactful yeah i think occupational therapy is it's not that deep as you're talking about no of course the 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 deepest layers of psychology that you want to peel and look at those affect what we see as Mm. occupational therapists we can really see the box from all directions and Mm -hmm. inside of it yeah and that occupational therapy like opens so many doors yeah for us in regards doing therapy 
yeah. with people mm -hmm. we can take so many different angles that people never even realized were there oh that's what's so good with this education that we have yeah and that's why it's such a good foundation for anything else mm -hmm. we do in terms mm -hmm. of like doing work with people yeah i think it's really good for that yeah and the thing with as you mentioned there as well with occupational therapy it's very broad yeah broad education and line of work if we take for example a psychologist yeah. it will majorly look at the like uh, psychological like identity of a yeah. of a client uh, we take the physical therapist it will only mostly look at the like physical flaws or physical like aspect of your health but we as occupational therapists we look at the physical mm. uh, psychological emotional socially like uh, and em environmental yeah because we look uh, <laughs> we look we try to get a bigger picture yeah and we like we look a lot at how you're living your daily mm. life which is most of what we do yeah and because that's what we do it's like gets very mm. like broad and yes. i'm i'm glad because but unfortunately occupational therapy is like very ignored not ignored but forgotten yeah profession yeah because i don't know how about you but i get a lot of like that in my daily life that I, no one knows what occupational therapy I is i think because I have a great set of colleagues mm. which have done amazing work yeah. in the field that if I work with teachers that they have seen, the teachers really respect yeah. and emphasize the therapy and they like, they're like, oh, thank God this person is getting occupational mm. therapy yeah. or like their like student or whatever. Yeah. And it's like it could be anything yeah. that you do mm. that's why i love it because yeah a lot of occupational therapy is doing the like practicing the practical mm. stuff and practical routines for you to get as independent yeah as possible yeah it is a lot of that but as i said when i work in a such a psychological way at most times as well it doesn't have to be that because no. most, especially in psychiatric care, most people aren't like comfortable or okay with even doing the practical stuff in the beginning yeah. at least. So then you just have to like have consolation, just have like talk with the client mm. and like more therapeutical sessions to get there. Yeah. And that's why I love it as well, because I can like not do whatever I want, but I can like in a flexible way use my tools as I yeah. see fit so that's a really good thing yeah all right but I think we've talked about we've talked about the powerlifting meet we've talked yeah. about addictions we yeah. talked about training mm -hmm. we've talked about a lot of things today more yeah. general stuff but let's get to the last segment of the yeah. compass which is an underrated or overrated exercise yeah and i believe it's uh, underrated this yeah week. i think it's underrated yeah it's fine if it's not but we're doing <laughs> no, <it's not. laughs> we're, we're, we're doing underrated today yeah yeah so you want to kick it off you gotta underrate the movement for mm, me i think i need to think for a bit you okay. go first yeah i can go first uh like i've been thinking but I talked to you before the podcast as well about the reverse bench press. Yeah. I mentioned it earlier in the previous uh, yeah. podcast episode as well. But that's an exercise that mm. like I really adapted and included during yeah. uh, my new training block yeah. after the meet. Mm. I implemented it because of the like uh, the wrist positioning. Yeah which was a major issue but also like the forums yeah and i like read and heard a lot of people talking about if you're quite tricep dominant which mm. i am myself you will have or at least be able to build a big reverse bench mm -hmm. and yeah. i noticed that as well when i try it out and now doing it a lot uh, mm. that it's you really have to press a lot from your triceps yeah instead of like 
you still yeah you're still using the the, the chest, chest. Yeah. and it's more like upper upper chest type mm. movement you could like uh, compare it to an incline bench mm. in a way i i also am a big fan of the incline bench so mm. i don't I, I can't favoritize one of them yeah. over the other but another thing which i also realized except like the wrist movement mm. the tricep activation is like the you really have to use your core a mm. lot mm. because the first time i did it i swaddled a lot because i didn't like brace my core properly yeah that's a really big thing in all of the lifts if you really can breathe and brace properly mm. you really can add a lot of weight in your lifts yeah and one last thing which I really liked about it is like it teaches you the elbow tuck, mm. which is really implementary and good for your ordinary bench press. Mm. You mm. don't want to guilty press it. You, you want to tuck in your elbows yeah. as much as possible to really get the most out of the press mm. at like off the chest. Yeah, the bottom. Uh, and when you like, you, you have the supinated grip mm. in the reverse bench, you like you're mandatorily using the tuck in yeah, position. Yeah, you, know, you have can't, to do it. <laughs> you can't like do this. You yeah. you actually the have hands, it. Like it it, uh, don't work. it comes <laughs> no. automatically. Yeah, and it's like like I mentioned, it's so many benefits with it. But that's an issue with things like that. It it's an exercise that looks weird, so people don't do it. So why? Yeah. And it's also like hard to get into if you feel it the first time. It's scary to hold the bar that yeah. way. So and that's uh, one one last thing before we hop on to your exercise, which mm -hmm. I mentioned now. <laughs> the thing that it maybe looks weird, yeah, but that's the thing I do because I strive for that duration to try new things. I, as you know, and many of you know as well, I try a lot of exercises that maybe mm -hmm. are considered as like unusual and maybe yeah maybe looks weird, but. <laughs> Uh, majority of those exercises like one of my go-to's at this day because I try them for a reason yeah I don't try them just to look silly I try them because I see great value in it mm. like take the searcher squat for example yeah, yeah. looks quite funny holding the bar like <laughs> this but it's so like activating at your core which is so good like holding maybe three plates in a yeah. position like that if you can do that you can really improve your squat yep. with big numbers. Mm -hmm. So that's another thing I like to like teach people to really embrace, like try new stuff. Yeah. Just don't think about what other people mm -hmm. think. Just just go for it mm -hmm. if you see great value for your capacity. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But how about you? You got a underrated exercise for today's segment. I don't know if it's underrated, but yeah. I would say that a lot of people clown this exercise in favor of the pull-up. Mm -hmm. I'm going to say the lat pull-down. It's a very popular exercise, mm -hmm. but I do feel like people say the pull-up is better. Yeah, I can see uh, that. But I feel like this is all about capacity, yeah. like you said. Mm. If you can't really... I have always been able to do pull-ups. Yeah. So, <laughs> but until I started doing a lot of lat pull-downs, yeah. really nailing in lat pull-down form with lower weight, building it up. Mm. Only then have I been able to start feeling my back in the mm. actual pull-up. Oh, I haven't thought about it that like that. So I've used it as a tool to actually like use my back. I can mm. like really feel the contraction and the fiber fibers mm. crunching <laughs> yeah. on the pull up. Yeah, so it it's transformed my pull up. Mm. Yeah, I really like the lat pull down. There are a lot of like different angles and variation yeah. of it. And I really like the I don't know what kind of grips you use in it, mm. but uh, I don't know I like the one when you have a quite neutral grip. Yeah, pretty I think wide. About about like there, it's it's like my favorite yeah and like when you have uh, like the ring here so you have to like instead of this group you have this group ah. because i really can engage my lats and like yeah. the whole back in a mm. more 
sufficient way for me. Mm -hmm. But then again, it's like due to my rounding back, I think that plays a huge role in it. I can't like feel the same contraction or like feel mm -hmm. of the movement if I don't like adjust it yeah. for my capacity. Mm -hmm. But I did a lot of those like higher ups, like switching like grip width, yeah. like like I said, grip like angle and stuff like that. And I do been... feel like the easiest way in the beginning to get the connection to the lats mm. is to take a wider grip. Yeah. Then you can really like squeeze the lats. Yeah. It won't be as affecting at like building muscle or strength mm. as having a more neutral or closer grip. Yeah. But you'll definitely feel your lats way easier. Yeah, and I don't know. That's a quite difficult one. I don't know if it's like underrated or overrated. Yeah, I it's think probably it's probably uh, neutral. <laughs> I think it's properly rated, but it's like, like you said, it's being clowned. Yeah. <laughs> like uh, some people say, like, oh, pull up is king, calisthenic, baby. <laughs> but that's also because uh, lat pull down is one of those exercises that a lot of people really don't know how to execute. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, yep. Because the. A lot of requests that I get as well is like I only feel the biceps when I do the lat pull down. Yeah. How I don't feel mm -hmm. anything in my back. Mm -hmm. As about yeah, I can show you and like teach you. But that's a good example of like ninety mm -hmm. percent of the people. Yeah, what they like clown this exercise and wouldn't say that the one is better than the other. No, it's very like way way of putting it yeah. because I think it's very individual the pull up will be really good for like creating body <coughs> awareness and like controlling yeah. your body through space yeah but for this one purpose like really learning how to use your back i think the lat pull down is superior yeah and i think a combination of the two would yeah. uh, be pretty sufficient because probably yeah i do a lot of lat pull downs but i rarely do any pull ups yeah and I want yeah. to as well include some more pull-ups because I can deadlift about 240 but I can't even do like five clean pull-ups. Yeah, but you're a big boy. Yeah, I'm a mm -hmm. big boy. That, <laughs> but that uh, don't have to like hinder me to like improve no. my pull-ups. Oh yeah, I mean we've seen some really big people do pull-ups like Kiriakos Grizzly. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> because yeah, I'm a big dude big, but I'm also thinking like if I can improve and like learn to do like let's say 10 yeah. clean pull-ups mm. with my body weight and functionality i could like improve my lifts a lot yeah but i want to do it as well because i notice my upper back strength isn't that mm. like stacked at the moment i have good strength in my lower back mm. uh, but my upper back both strength and stability has to improve because I've been noticing it in my rows as well. Mm. Can't row that heavy. I can do reps, but even mm. when rowing like 100 kg is like heavy, really heavy for me. Should like, be. I feel like 100 kg is pretty like a, it's a lot in the row, but how much can you seal row? Because I feel like that yeah. is what would be more considered like back strength compared to chest strength in the bench press because then yeah. you're like loaded against the surface mm -hmm. just the other way from the bench press yeah and i'm like i've actually incorporated not the zero because mm. it's a very rare gym equipment yeah <laughs> unfortunately because i i personally i think it's one if not the best row variation out there yeah but uh, I've been starting doing a lot of, or shall start to be doing a lot of pen layer rows. Mm -hmm. Like having your back very vertical to yeah. the floor. Perpendicular. Yes, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Instead of like a very upright type of row, uh, which I've been doing a lot in the past. Mm. But due to my posture mobility and weakness in the upper back, I, I could uh, benefit a lot from the pen layer row because I don't have the seat row equipment. Yeah. But yeah, very, very interesting thoughts about that. Yeah. Yeah. I think we're gonna wrap this episode up. That was, this is technically the fourth episode of the yeah. 
podcast, the compass. But I think this is gonna come out as the second. Yeah, because due to we having a pretty busy schedule, both yeah. of us in our daily life, both in work and personal mm. life. We felt like we tried to film different pre- angles and stuff. Yeah, like that. and it, one it, of the cameras cut out. We had some technical issues and, and it, a little bit. Here. It was like yeah. it was a good cinematic approach. Yeah, but we felt like it was too much time yeah. for our ourselves yeah. right now, at so least. A little bit too ambitious. <laughs> so maybe something we will get back to in the future if we, we like a... expand the podcast. Yeah. But right now we think we'll stick with this type yeah. of format mm-hmm. because it will be easier and faster mm-hmm. to like both edit and upload but yeah uh, i think it has worked out pretty well yeah, yeah. we might get a crotch camera under the table oh, hell yeah, like <laughs> <you all wish. laughs> all right yeah. that was it for that was this it. episode catch you later bye-bye bye-bye <laughs> yes <laughs>